uniform motion around a unit circle. Now I would like to do a problem where we actually do a specific calculation. And you will see how limited our opportunities are to actually solve a problem from beginning to end. I would like to calculate the derivative of a vector function in at least one case, specifically, in full detail. And I think, well, one case is simple. We're not even going to consider it if it's a straight line. <laughs> Pretend this is straight. I'm going to erase it. This will be very quick, right? And suppose that we also parameterized it uniformly. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. That's like a Cartesian coordinate system. Not the same Cartesian, uh, at least regular coordinate system on the straight line. And so here is u of 1, or maybe u of 0, u of 1, u of 2, u of 3. Then what do you think u prime of gamma looks like? Well, I'm not going to dwell on this, because we basically discovered what it'll look like last time. It'll be a vector tangential to this line, and then how it will, because our parameter gamma is increasing in this direction, it'll point this way. And then its magnitude will really depend on uh, the parameter. And does it change quickly or slowly? And I think it'll basically be this vector, right? And you can say it's a vector that points along the straight line and has this length. That's a full geometric specification. So that's one problem that you can certainly do from beginning to end. But this is a little uh, bordering on trivial. So what do you think, what problem should we try? What would be a non-trivial problem that you think you could, that you think we could do from beginning to end? and get an answer that we can describe in full detail geometrically. That u prime is a vector that points in this direction and has a certain length. All right, we're considering uniform motion around a unit circle. Okay, and I'm saying motion because it doesn't have to be motion, it can just be a curve, but it's nice to sometimes think of curves as motion as the trajectory of a material particle. So we'll be calculating u prime of gamma. So there are a few things to be specified. So if you recall, the derivative does not depend on where we choose the uh, arbitrary origin to be. So of course I'm going to put it right in the center of the circle. That's number one. Number two, we need a parameter. We need to parameterize the curve. That's our coordinate system on the curve, assigning a number to every point on the curve. So I'll choose an arbitrary line. Uh, I didn't mean for it to be horizontal, but it doesn't matter. There's no concept of horizontal. And I'll call gamma be this angle. That's my parameter. Anyone would choose this parameter automatically. Also, it's kind of nice. It corresponds to, this is unit length, excuse me, unit unit circle, so radius is 1, right? So gamma actually corresponds to arc length, and arc length is something that we'll talk about next. But yes, gamma is also, the, because we're measuring the angle, in, the angle in radians, it's also the length of this arc, by definition of what a radian is. Okay, that's great. So here's, uh, I'm not saying this is, well, this is 0. Okay, so let's go away from zero. Here we are at gamma, okay? The definition, if you recall... Okay, so we have to construct them. Here's our u of gamma. We have to construct each one of these elements. Here's u of gamma. Now I need to find the point that corresponds to gamma plus h. What does that mean? It means I'm going to take an angle that equals h, right? And eventually it'll be very small, but because I want to be drawing things, I can't make it tiny. So here it is. So this right here is u of gamma. This right here is u 
of gamma plus h. By the way, I hope you're seeing that these are capital U's. <laughs> U is a funny letter. Uh, yeah, capital U's. Doesn't matter, obviously. Okay, now I have to do u of gamma plus h minus u of gamma. Well, here it is. This is, it's this vector that points this way. And we know, we discussed this, that in the limit, as h goes to zero, you can begin visualizing it, it'll end up being a vector that's tangential to the curve. That's what it'll end up being. So we know that it will end up being a vector that looks like this. So the only question is its length. Well, let's calculate its length for the final, for the, excuse me, finite angle. So we have to calculate the length of this vector given h. That's not a very hard calculation. So I'll call this vector delta u. Equals. Okay, we'll do it geometrically. How we're going to do it geometrically, not the dot product or anything like that. Just let's consider some triangles. So we have to bisect this angle. And because this triangle is isosceles, the bisector is also orthogonal and divides this in two. And if this radius right here and this vector is length 1, then, then this side right here is 1 times sine of h over 2. Yes, yeah, sine of h over 2, but that's half the side. We need the whole side. So it's 2. So then the length of delta u, which is in the numerator, divided by h is, instead of putting the 2 on top, I'll put it in the denominator of the bottom. So I have h over 2 here and h over 2 here. And as you know from calculus, this is a classical limit. It approaches 1 as h goes to 0. It's sine of x over x. You're familiar with the limit? So that approach is 1. So in the limit, this vector will be unit length. So let me draw it. u prime of gamma. So we knew its direction from our previous discussion. And now we were able to calculate its length. And its length is 1. I think this kind of makes intuitive sense. We also, it also corresponds to our understanding of velocity. When you're going in a circle, your velocity points in the tangential direction along the circle. So it corresponds to that intuition. That's very nice. But now you can also answer the question, and there would be a couple of interesting things that we could do here, is what do you think u double prime of gamma is? That's my question number one. And question number two will be u prime and u double prime of gamma. This means second derivative, by the way. If the circle is not unit, unit radius, if it's not a unit circle, but if it's a circle of radius r, more general. But first, let's answer this question. So we could begin to do the same calculation, but there's actually not much to do. Because if you think about it, u of gamma, I look, it's almost perfect, kind of looked like this, right? It just went uniformly around the circle, right? But if you think about u prime of gamma, it also goes uniformly around the circle. It's just at a 90 degree angle to u. So u prime of gamma is the exact same vector. It's just 90 degrees ahead. So its derivative will be orthogonal to it in the turn left kind of sense, right? So if this is u prime of gamma, right, we're not even putting it, right? So let me clarify that a little bit. u prime of gamma, the way we're visualizing it right now, goes like this, right? But remember that whenever we do any sorts of calculations with vectors, we put them at the arbitrary origin, right? And we consider all vectors as emanating from that arbitrary origin. So by that from that perspective, u prime of gamma is, does not look like this, but rather looks like this. So it's the exact same as u of gamma. And so its derivative will be orthogonal to it in the turn left sense. 
you could say, in the counterclockwise direction. So it'll be this vector. You guys agree? So we've answered that question as well. And the third derivative will be turned by 90 degrees one more time. And the fourth derivative will be turned by 90 degrees one more time. So we've, we now understand the derivatives of all orders for this particular u of gamma. So you see these u of gammas that we can be analyzed from beginning to end are few and far between. And because we've found one, we're just going to milk it to death. Okay, so what would happen if instead of length 1, it would be, it was length r? What would change? Well, I just think everything gets multiplied by r, right? So this u of gamma is length r instead of length 1, and now u prime of gamma is length r, and so on. Yeah, so that's what changes. And then this will be length r and, and all of the other ones. Oh, yeah, fantastic question. With regard to these two quantities, how do they change if I change my parameter gamma from increasing counterclockwise to increasing clockwise? Now gamma goes clockwise. Do you see it's a different parameter? Previously, the material particle moved in the counterclockwise direction, but now it's moving in the clockwise direction. So this is no longer gamma. This is now gamma. And all of these gammas would have a negative sign associated with them. So how does this change? And then, more interestingly, how does the second derivative change? So think about that. Yeah. So the comment is, uh, this being acceleration always points towards the center. And that's absolutely true. If you imagine a weight on a string and you're spinning it, spinning it, whether you're spinning it in the counterclockwise direction or in the opposite direction, the string will be in tension. And you also, you have to accelerate it in. That's one way to look at it. Another intuitive way to look at it is when you go around the corner and the centripetal or centrifugal, I don't know what those terms mean, <laughs> force pushes you out. It pushes you out whether the car is turning left or whether the car is turning right. It'll be out uh, in both cases, which means that the car itself is accelerating inward towards the center of the circle. So yes. So I think what you're saying is that this vector will remain the same and not change its direction. And that's exactly right. But what's interesting is that this vector will absolutely change its direction. If the material particle is moving in the clockwise direction, then u prime will point in this direction. So at the right angle to u, but now in the, when, in the turn right sense, in the clockwise direction. And then the second derivative, u double prime, will be at the right angle to that, also in the counterclockwise direction. So once again, pointing inward, right? So all of the odd order derivatives flip their direction, and all of the even number derivatives preserve their direction. Isn't that interesting? That will come in handy in just a moment. <laughs>